I'm Commander Shepard. This is my favorite prop shop on the Citadel. Greetings fellow makers, I'm Bill. Welcome down to my prop shop today. I'm going to be showing you a little bit about this old gem, this old costume I've had kicking around for a very long time. This is my Mass Effect armor. This is the Defender armor from Fallout 3? Fallout 3? Mass Effect 3? <laughs> I don't even know what game I'm playing or what costume I'm wearing. Believe it or not, I made this costume, I think, four years ago. This was one of my very first foam armor builds. I made a bunch of Mass Effect armor, and it's all made out of floor mats. In fact, these are Harbor Freight floor mats. Now, today, I know a lot more about making foam stuff than I did way, way back then, but I was still able to pull this off. So I want you guys to know that no matter what, so long as you get started with your material, start learning what you can do with it, don't get too caught up on the particulars about how it's made, the specific glues or whatever, just start making things. For example, I made all of this using super glue. This is before I discovered barge contact cement. That, in my opinion, is a much better alternative glue than the uh, super glue, but this still works. And I built it four years ago and it hasn't fallen apart yet. It's all super glue. Ha. There's a whole bunch of other techniques that I used on this costume that I would have done differently were I making it this week. But that doesn't mean it's a bad costume. Obviously, I'm still wearing it. So anyway, I'm getting ready for a convention and I decided I wanted to break this thing out again and it needed just a little bit of upkeep and I'll show you a little bit about that and then I'll show you about how I put this thing on to wear it at a convention. There was a lot about this armor that was falling apart just a bit, especially the Velcro that was put on using hot glue. There's a couple of spots where the Velcro fell all the way off or just other places where it was kind of loose. Nowadays, I would stitch the Velcro to a piece of nylon webbing and glue that down, but way back then, I didn't know to do that. So for the quick repair in this, I just used more hot glue to glue the Velcro back down, including this part on the belt where it was completely missing. I just cut off a new piece of Velcro and glued it down in place. Now I know these are temporary fixes, I may have to fix it again in the future, but it only took me about 10 minutes to make this thing convention ready again. Of course there were some other spots where the foam was just really kind of beat up, so I cleaned it off a little bit and then used a silver sharpie to kind of highlight those edges to make it look like there was some metal exposed, like it actually got beat up in the real world. A couple other spots just needed to be tacked down with a little bit of super glue to keep from tearing. I noticed that one of the rivets on the torso was missing and I don't remember how I made them. So instead of trying to remake that, I found a casting of a bearing that was just about the right look. I sanded it down a little bit so that it was the right diameter and then super glued it in place. This is the sort of fix that you wouldn't even know happened unless I pointed it out. It looks pretty good. When you're repairing your own costume, there's a whole bunch of different stuff you could do depending on how much you want it to look fresh. This thing uh, is supposed to look a little bit beat up, so I didn't get too picky about making it look nice and clean. In fact, I tried to make it look a little bit dirtier. That's about it for the repairs on this costume. I'm ready to wear it and run around at a convention. So let me show you how that's done. Putting on the costume is fairly easy. The undersuit is just some athletic clothing. I believe this is women's uh, yoga pants, very attractive. The texture was painted on using some fabric paint and a stencil. For the boots, the kneecaps get velcroed together. This is so that it travels easier. I also have some custom insoles in the boots for comfort. Then all I have to do is put my women's legging leg down into the boot uh, to wear them. These are just some rubber cement galoshes that the foam is glued to. Next up are the thigh pieces. These are, of course, more foam. They Velcro down to the shirt. This is to hold them up so they don't slide down my leg. And then they snap around my leg using some buckles and some elastic. Also note that this armor has pockets on the thighs, which is really, really handy for running around at a convention. The torso goes together in a couple of pieces. It clamshells in the front and the back. I usually Velcro this together, and then the shoulder caps go over the top to hold it together really snugly. Then I can just slide myself into the torso part and then Velcro up one of the sides and I am entombed in my armor. To hold it all around my belly area, I've got a belt that Velcros to the back and then it gets Velcro to the sides. Uh, it's adjustable for multiple uses. Oh yeah, did I mention more than 
I think a dozen people have worn this thing. Yes. So I can adjust that belt to fit me and then I can snap it in the front and the belt is good to go. The last things to do are the arms. These are all attached to the sleeve of the undersuit with Velcro. So the pauldron slides up to my shoulder using some elastic to hold it down and it simply Velcro's up to my shoulder and since it's foam and it's nice and lightweight, it's not gonna go anywhere. Then the bicep parts, again with elastic, slide onto my arm and Velcro in place. The forearm pieces slide on and these are just held on using elastic and some friction. The last bits are the gloves. Those go on like gloves do. If you've ever put gloves on before, then you know everything you need to know about gloves. And that's the final touch. Of course, the last thing is my Paladin. This is one I made a very long time ago. I've got a video on this guy showing how I did some repairs on it, if you'd like to check that out. Altogether though, this is one of my favorite costumes and I will continue to wear it so long as it doesn't fall off my body. There's an awful lot of emotion wrapped up in this thing. I've got a sticker on one arm where I got to go backstage at Wootstock and meet a whole bunch of people, including Adam Savage, which was amazing. So that sticker lives on there forever. And also, like I said, uh, this is one of my first foam costumes and it's got a lot of sentimental value to me. There you go, guys, a little look into an old costume that I still like to wear. And of course, I'm looking forward to whatever it is they cook up for the next Mass Effect game. Like I said, I learned a lot in the last four years about making foam armor. Of course, if you want some insight into what I learned, you can check out both of our foam smith books at punishedprops.com. The one on armor has a lot about how I build these types of costumes using technique even more advanced than what I used on this guy here. So if you want a head start in making your own foam armor costumes, go over there and grab that today. Do you have any questions about my armor or foam smithing? Let me know down in the comments. I try every week to make sure I get back to as many of you guys as possible. Hey, thanks so much for checking out the video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We have a couple of videos out every single week on popping costume making and you don't wanna miss any of them. That's it for this week, you guys. I should go.